question. So, here we go. So Nas just had his 25th anniversary for it was written. Mm -hmm. And there's a story about, he said something in the lyrics of one of the songs that Fly Tie would assign me if the numbers was right or something like well, that. Well, let me just say this. Now I remember Nas, Lil Nas, coming to me. I think G-Rap brought him. And um, it was just my way, all right? My way, like I said, we always had a chain of command. And nobody get more, okay, who you are, than who we got. You got to earn them stripes. Now, his idea of the numbers weren't right is what I just spoke about a little earlier. His advance to him wasn't right. The points, I guarantee you, was going to be just what he got or more. All right. Big advances I'm not doing, especially, especially to a child, younger. And it had nothing to do with his talent or nothing. You know, it's going to be, you're going to make your money. You, if you set, you're going to make your money. If, you get, if I advance you money, it just means you're going to have to pay me back my money. Right. So who brought Nas to you? G, cool G Rap brought him. G Rap brought him to you. So right. Hey, this is right, right. Different. But I knew about him before G Rap brought him. Right. I knew about him from Shannon and him. Because he was Queensbridge. Mm -hmm. Trash, Craig G, you know what I'm saying? I already knew about him uh, because of them. But I, I knew he was nice. But G. So actually, you didn't take the chance because you didn't want to give him. Well, you didn't feel. It wasn't, it wasn't that I didn't want to take the chance. That just was my way of doing business. Right. Period. Now, okay. I also heard. That you had the opportunity to sign Jay Z or something. Jay Z and Big and about. Biggie. How's that? How's that come about? The I had a group. Track Masters were my producers, and I I gave them a production deal. They had a group called Little Bastards. Little Bastards were exactly that a bunch of little bastards, like the like the little <laughs> rascals, and they knew how much I love Cool G Rap. I was I was Cool G Rap. I loved him. And one I came, I think, I think his name was Half, one of the kids in the group. And he would run past my office and stick his head in there and go, G Rap is whack. And then run. <laughs> right. And that's what they would do. G Rap is whack. And run. So I would come out and, and, and then they would be on the road. They were young and they weren't thuggish bad. They were just mischievous little kids. Well, I got with them and I put them, I kind of took them under my wing and liked them. And they were from um, Atlantic Terminals, uh, the projects in Brooklyn. Right. They were talking about their man Biggie Smalls. Biggie Smalls, Biggie Smalls. He's, Biggie's nice, Biggie's nice. They, they were, were talking about Yes, him. because they, they, they was, he knew, they knew him. They brought Biggie to the office one day. Like I said, I never signed nobody from a demo. He rapped. That nigga nice. All right, so I had every intention of signing Biggie. Then one day he came to my office and said, Yo, uh, this kid, uh, he go, because I understand my life, as, as strange as it may sound, mm -hmm. all right, now looking back, 2020 looking back, Biggie would have been way down the list coming out. Like, that was with them because I got Sam, Biz, Kane, G, Ace, Shante, Marley. Kid Capri, YZ. So it had been a long, it would have been a long process for me to get to, to get bigger. It's as strange as it may sound. So he says to me, Yo, 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 I got this kid name. This other kid wanna sign me, man. So I said, he said, it's Puff. I said, Puff? That's my little man. Yeah, he started a little club. That's my little man. So Biggie came from that. Jay Z was Kane's man. All right, I wanted to sign Jay Z because I could always tell I had I, I still got I got unreleased songs on Jay Z right now. All right, that he did with Kane, they mine. <laughs> I got them. All right, if I, but I I never had any plans to do it, but I have them. And that matter, they were, remember floppy disk? Uh -huh. They're on floppy disk. <laughs> Oh, them shits is all, <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. <coughs> and L, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Jay Z, I was going to sign him. Um, but, see, this now, all this is transitional period for me. This is me not wanting to be in the record business no more. It's just other personal stuff going on with me. This is me wanting to be home more with my kids. 
This is, you know what I'm saying? There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. So, and then, so there's Nas. All three of them have happened around the same Nas, time. Nas, Jay-Z, and, and Biggie. Biggie. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been kidding. Now listen, after the Juice Crew, right, right. you would shut it down. But I remember also I had Jizz and Riz and ODB too. Right. Right. So that Wu Tang thing, I got that yep. too. You, you would have, see? <laughs> right. Just looking at the lineage. <laughs> right, but but looking back, you know, there's a there's there's a connection. All right, it didn't happen. Jay Z, I don't, I speculate why it didn't happen. All right, um, but whatever happened, happened for the best for everybody. Now I know. Um, uh, Biggie's mother feels like if I'd have signed him, he'd be alive. Mm. Because of because of my concern over my artists. I always had personal relationships. You understand? My relationship was never just business, artist, manager, artist label, my relationship with everybody. And I always I was like I'm a man, but I was like a mother hen with them. All right. They could tell you when I when we went on tour. I never let my artist stay with the other artists, ever. I would, let me tell you what I would do. Everybody else stay at the Marriott, I have my artist at the Rich Carlton in a suite with everybody in the same suite. Uh. I have a four bedroom suite and everybody in there, we had our own party. But I could stay there and watch everybody. You understand? Um, that whole East Coast, West Coast thing, when Biggie got shot, I went out there. The very next day. Now, I remember, we in this, it seemed like every time something happened, we'd be there on the radio. And i never forget, this was Sunday well, night. you went out there because you had to go out there. No, I went out there because I wouldn't know what happened to Biggie. Oh, okay, so you went out there. So, Sunday night, Ed Lover come running in the station. <sighs> I just got out of California. Everybody from New York is leaving there. Da -da 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 -da. Biggie got killed. And, he looked like he ran from California to me. <laughs> what the hell wrong with you? <laughs> oh, I just made it, guys. I just made it. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky. Sneakers were still smoking. <laughs> smoking, right. Oh, everybody from New York is leaving. Uh oh. Don't worry about it. I got it. Everybody from New York is leaving. And so now, I immediately. Call the airline, mm -hmm. get a ticket to leave first thing Monday morning. Because <clears throat> I'm going to find out what happened. And trust me, the people I know, pff, really, <laughs> they ain't mad about no goddamn rappers. Right. All right. I know the place, I used to hang this spot called Nickerson Gardens I'm in, in Compton. Me, Shan, G. King, Shante, Magic, that was our spot. Come to find us, you were where? Nickerson guns, oh my God, they kill people in there. Da, 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 kill us. Da, da, da. People look at me like I'm crazy. Uh -huh. Now, the reason we hung out at Nickerson Gardens, every time we was on the road, I would always be able to find somebody who could cook. We looking for home for cook. Miss Betty lived here. And she cooked her behind off. And she loved cooking for us. So we go to Miss, we go to Nickerson. That's where we hung out. I, I thought Nickerson Gardens was a resort. I didn't know the projects. <laughs> All right. So now people tell me they got killers and this and that. So I'm like, hold up. I grew up in the Albany projects, ninth floor. It was five killers lived on my floor. Right. So I ain't scared of killers. Right. As long as they ain't trying to kill me, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> me and killers get along fine. Right. So Nickerson Gardens, I remember Mike Conception, I heard he was, he was in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he was the past head of the Crips or whatever, whatever. So some years, I'm telling him, I used to hang out in Nickerson Gardens. He's like, Nick, no, you, no, you ain't, when you went there? Must have been in the daytime. Nah, nigga, two in the morning. <laughs> 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 we be sitting outside with everybody else. <laughs> All right. It ain't about us being bad, it's about us being cool with everybody. Right. And the first time we went there, this is so funny. The first time we go to Nickerson, because this is my, my normal arrival time. Mm -hmm. We get to a market, get to the radio school. I'm a, the radio station always has somebody assigned to us. First thing I do is take us where all the thugs be. That's where I want to go. Take us there. 
Because that take us to the Greece, and there was no malls, and take us to the Greasy Spoon, that social club, that, that's where we want to go. Because I'm going to go there, and I'm going to talk to everybody, I'm going to buy the joint, all of whatever you want to eat, right. in the name of Roxanne, Shantae, in the name of Shan, whoever. Right. And by the way, I got some free tickets to the show, and I'm going to take your name. We're going to shout you out on the radio tonight, because we're going to be on your local radio station tonight, doing the Mr. Magic Rap Attack. So, national, so, the, so all the, they would be shocked because I'm rolling up in the biggest slide stretch of shit you could see. Right. That ain't there. You used to seeing that. Right. All right. But we cool. We cool. When we get, we ain't trying to be standoffish and that. We cool. Right. All right. That's how it was in Nickerson Gardens. We was cool with them. Now, the first time we went, we go there looking for Megalito. <laughs> <laughs> This the cra uh, this the crazy <laughs> this the craziest thing. Sound crazy already. Hold on, hold on. So we see the when the van we in the van. When the van pull on the block, the whole block start moving. It's like one or two in the morning. Mm -hmm. Whole block is shifting. We don't know about the blue and red shit yet. Right. <laughs> Shad jump out the van. Said, yo, we're not with that. He got on blue and red. Fucked him up completely. <laughs> Yo, yo, wait a minute. So he's trying to, so we finally catch them. Let them know we're from New York. Everything is cool. Right. We sitting out with them, whatever. They go get what they got to get for us. Right. They Every time they see us from then on, right. we good. Then we meet Miss Betty, the whole thing. So me, Magic, and Shan really end up going out there a lot. Right. Maybe Shantae too, but Shantae didn't, Shantae, we always had to hide her. Hide what we did from her. Right. All right. But, um, 